All right, what's up, everybody? Um, it says that I'm live, so hopefully I'm live. Um, for the first minute, I'm going to probably stay here where I can see the chat. Uh, you guys let me know if you can hear me. Um, definitely a little nervous about all the technical things here. So hopefully everybody can hear me loud and clear. Um, hopefully you can see me and everything looks good. Um, so any feedback you guys can give me on that would be greatly appreciated. Um, definitely hoping that everybody's doing well out there. Um, I think there's maybe like, I don't know, like a 15 second delay or so between when I talk and you guys see it. So, like I said, I'm going to start hopefully seeing you guys respond in the comments, uh, in the chat, just letting me know that, uh, that you're there. To my students, um, I haven't seen you guys in like two months. It's unbelievable, right? I think March 13th was our last day together. Um, I know that I even kind of sarcastically joked about, oh, this might be the last time I see you, Sue. So have a great summer. Ah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Um, I miss you guys for sure. Um, to everybody else um, that, you know, you guys aren't my students, uh, I'm glad that you're here too. Uh, thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for supporting the channel so much. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm hoping so much that, uh, oh, you guys can hear the Kahoot. Uh-oh. But I have myself muted. That was supposed to be a surprise. Um, <laughs> can't let me know if you can still hear the Kahoot, because now I just, I mean, I was muted already, so if you could hear before, I'm a little worried about that. Um, I told you guys that there might, might be some technical difficulties. I advertise this to my students as, come watch this, it's going to be a disaster. Um, but, oh man, I'm so excited seeing your names. Mackenzie, what's up? Chris, Christian, Megan, um, Brielle, man, miss you guys. Xander, Brandon, um, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're staying all right. Um, it's really good to talk to you again, even though I can't see you or hear you. Um, at least it kind of feels like we're in the same room again together, so that's good. Um, if you guys can still hear the Kahoot, then, well, I tell you what, let's do this, because, okay, so the plan is not to do a Kahoot today. What I wanted to do is test to see if it's possible to do a Kahoot and that it'll work. Um, cause I was definitely worried that with the time lag that it might not make sense to do a Kahoot review. So I really just wanted to try honestly like one or two questions to see if it was an epic fail. And if it was, then I'll know, all right, don't do that. And if it works, then I'd know, okay, that's something we can try together. So since you guys can hear it, let's do the Kahoot thing first right now. And then whether it works or not, we're going to stop after like a question or two, and then I can get rid of it and you won't hear the music anymore. So, um, let's do that. So let me go ahead and hopefully, now you guys should hopefully be seeing um, the Kahoot thing. So on your phones, if you want to get that out, kahoot.it, and then you have the pin for the game up on the screen, 5306181, um, and you guys can sign into that. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said, we're going to do just a question or two. What I really, so as you guys get into this and start um, signing into this and we see whether this is doable or if it's a complete cluster disaster, um, what we are going to focus on is the concept application FRQ because that has, um, it's changed a little bit. Uh, we have some new information about that and I think it's for the best. So I'm very, very positive about these changes. I think it's actually going to make your lives easier on the AP exam. I think it's going to help you to do better. I think we have, you know, some stuff that you guys will get be able to score really well on. At the same time, I understand that it can add some stress to your lives because you weren't expecting this. So I'm going to show you the all new redesigned concept application FRQ, you know, that basically College Board just put out a few days ago. Uh, man, there are a lot of you on here. That is awesome. Um, like I said, this is a total complete experiment with the Kahoot. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, we'll see because, yeah, the time lag is kind of strong. Um, it looks like it's, it's a solid 15 seconds or so. Um, if anybody has tips for me about a way to reduce that lag, that would be great. Um, but if not, We'll test it out. We'll see if this works. I'm going to go ahead and embrace the Kahoot music since we're doing this now. All right. 
And let's go ahead and start. 205. That is amazing. All right, awesome. So let's start. Let's just see what it is. Like I said, we'll just do a question or two, test this out. If it's an epic fail, I apologize. If it works, that's cool. All right, so first question up. This landmark Supreme Court case established judicial review. All right, so you have three, we have four choices. McCulloch versus Maryland, Marbury versus Madison, Gideon versus Wainwright, and Lamana versus the world. Okay, so that was too short. The next question is a 30 second, so let's try that again. Um, all right, too laggy, definitely, definitely, definitely. Let's just do one more, let's try that again. This one has a little bit longer. Which term means to apply the Bill of Rights to the states? I think a lot of people were guessing so that they could get in the guess. This one, the time was uh, there, but let's see. On my end, we have five seconds left. All right, so I'm kind of feeling like that didn't work. I don't know. All right, people are saying better, so that's good. <laughs> it's still a struggle. All right. So I guess yes or no, we're going to be done with that. Um, should we? Should I do a, one that's a Kahoot-specific live stream review? Is that something that'll work? I'll obviously set the time a little bit longer, 30 to 40 seconds, something like that. Because um, that, that first question, I didn't realize. I had that set to 20 seconds. That was way, way, way too short. Um, but if it's like 30 to 40 seconds, you guys think that that would be a, a good review that we could do on one of the upcoming live streams um looks like we're kind of no nay no yes <laughs> yes with longer time i like the specifics of that answer yeah it's kind of laggy all right um so i think with longer time that it might work um so we'll come back to that another time um i am going to close out of kahoot so that hopefully you guys stop hearing that music. Um, thanks guys for trying, um, being patient with me. All right, so what we are going to go to now is, like I said, what I really wanted to do this for, which is to look at the concept application FRQ. All right, so up on the screen, we have our prompt. It says, well, first of all, you guys should recognize this, I think. Uh, this is the 2019 concept application FRQ. I've use this in at least one video, possibly even two videos, I don't know, um, but I've used it a couple times. But if you notice, the actual prompts are different. So this is from last year's AP exam. This was concept application FRQ number one. Um, as an AP reader, I actually scored this one last year, but they changed it up. So if you notice, you have parts A, B, and C, um, and they're pretty different. Let me show you how different. This is the before and the after. All right, so on the top, was last year's version, and so I'll just kind of highlight that. So if we look at last year, this is what it said. Part A, describe an action Congress could take to address the concerns of the interest group in the scenario. Part B, in the context of the scenario, explain how partisan divisions could prevent an action described in Part A. And C, explain why the Alliance Defending Freedom, that was the interest group that they mentioned in the scenario, might argue that their constitutional rights are threatened by the Johnson Amendment. All right, so you had three parts. The big thing, and this is what I focused on in my videos, was to make sure that you are um, addressing the scenario. So you had to talk about the scenario. Now, the new version. So this was released just a few days ago. I saw this, I think, Tuesday for the first time. What is today? Today's Thursday. Um, am I the only one that days of the week don't you know, like mean anything anymore? I don't even know. All right, so I think today is Thursday. Um, this is the new version, just put out there. Part A, if you notice it basically, oh, sorry, this is not the new one. I'm, I lied. This is last year's Supreme Court comparison FRQ. On the next page, we'll get back to the new one. So this is the other one. We, now, this year, we don't have a Supreme Court comparison FRQ, all right? Um, 
they took this one away. This is my favorite of the FRQs. I love this one because if you know your acquired cases, you could do really well on this FRQ every single time, basically no matter what. It was awesome. Part A, identify the constitutional clause. Um, that's the basis for Brown versus Board, which is a required case. And Hernandez versus Texas was a brand new case that you hadn't learned, but they gave you in this prompt. B says explain how the facts in both of those cases led to a similar decision in both cases. And then part C say, says explain how an interest group could use that decision in the new case, Hernandez versus Texas, to advance its agenda. All right. Um, I love that, that FRQ. They got rid of it this year. I was pretty bummed about that. I was really hoping that we would have a court comparison FRQ, but we don't. But it turns out, so now if you look at these two FRQs and then look at the new one this year, it is like a perfect mashup of those two FRQs. Part A, this is the new and official released version of this one, the revised version of this. It says, referencing the scenario, so you still have to refer to the scenario, describe an action Congress could take to address the concerns of the interest group and explain how partisan divisions could prevent this action. All right, so let's notice a couple of things. One is that within the single part A, you have two different task verbs. That is not how these FRQs have been since the redesign. So this is a pretty big change. Um, I think we're used to just doing one single task verb. Part A, one thing to do in part A. Part B, one thing to do in part B, etc. It is not that way on the concept application FRQ anymore. All right, so that is a huge thing to notice. Um, I don't want to focus on C just yet, but I'll point this out. Part C says describe, and it also says explain. Part B just has one, and it's an explain. All right, so now all of a sudden, instead of having three task verbs, we have five task verbs. So that is different. That is new. Don't panic. All right, I can feel the level of stress rising already. Don't worry about it. The time is short, but everybody's dealing with that also, okay? What you need to do is focus on yourself. Don't be overwhelmed. Everybody's gonna struggle to write this in 15 minutes. It's gonna go fast. Don't worry about it. I think, and here's, this is me just guessing because I don't know, I don't work for college, college Board. They don't ask me about these things. My guess is that they decided that with it, there only being three tasks on the concept application, and the 15 minutes plus the five to submit, so basically 20 minutes, I think they decided that that was too much time and that students would be able to use their notes too much, and so they wanted to make it tougher to use your open notes and to write the concept application in that short time frame. That's a guess. College Board has not said that. I haven't read anything official about that, so this is me completely guessing there, but that's my thought is that they are trying to reward students who are less reliant on their notes. So that again just goes to that idea of making sure that you understand and know your concepts as well as you possibly can, that you only have to go to your notes when you need to go to your notes. Don't be over-reliant on the notes um, like in the past. Um, so let's look at part A specifically, all right? So let's. this is what I want us to focus on now, all right? So we are on part A. Referencing the scenario, describe an action Congress would take to address the concerns of the interest group and explain how partisan divisions could prevent this action. Now, if we go back here, this was the original. It's basically part A and B together. Oops, sorry about that. Went back one slide too many. So again, last year, part A said to describe the action Congress could take. Part B said to explain how partisan divisions could prevent that action. Now this year, the new version, they would have put both of those things into one single part, part A. All right. The good news for you, what that means, it's not actually different, right? They're just changing the way they're presenting it to you. So last year, part A would have been two different ones. It would have been A and B. Now they're both on part A. Not a big deal. You know how to describe, right? You give the relevant details to something. Um, you know how to explain, you make a relationship clear, you do a cause and effect, you use the word because, you do the same things. Um, when you are writing your answer to part A, what I would suggest that you do, well actually we're gonna do we're gonna do some samples for that in just a moment. So um, that's the first thing I want to tell you. Just don't panic. Um, you're really, really gonna be okay. So let's kind of write go through writing the answer to part A. 
All right, so we're gonna do that here. Um, I'm gonna make an excuse. This keyboard I'm using sucks and the space bar is like that small. So a lot of times I struggle to hit the space bar because I try to type too fast. Um, on a good keyboard, I swear I'm kind of a good typist, but not on this one. So we have the scenario, which again, just to refer to, I know I didn't really go over that quickly, or I did go over it quickly. The idea here is that you have um, a conservative interest group called the Alliance Defending Freedom. And basically what happened is that there's something known as the Johnson Amendment. And that says it prohibited political activity by nonprofits. And what we care about is religious organizations. Um, it says that it pro prohibits them from contributing money to political campaigns or speaking out in favor against candidates running for political office. So the interest group here, they oppose this law. All right, They are not fans of the Johnson Amendment in any way, shape, or form. So describe an action Congress could take to address the concerns of the interest group. All right, So that is the first part of our prompt. We'll go ahead and make that red. And then we'll make the second part, we'll make that blue or some other color so that we can just see again that they are two different things that we have to do for this prompt. All right, so what could Congress do? Um, well, let's start it off by, again, I like us to reuse the prompt. One action Congress could take, and you guys can be answering in the, uh, in the chat for sure, giving ideas, what could Congress do to address, told you that spacebar thing was going to get me, to address the concerns of the interest group is to, all right, so what could they do to make the interest group happy? The interest group opposes the Johnson Amendment. Well, let's go with the most obvious power of Congress, right? They have the power to make laws. Um, they have that legislative ability. And so if there's a law saying one thing, Congress can pass a new law saying something else, right? So let's go with them changing that law is to pass a new law um, that gets rid of the restrictions, the Johnson Amendment had placed on religious leaders. All right, that's it. Um, I absolutely addressed the scenario. That's the biggest thing. Again, if I had said, if I had stopped here and only said one action Congress could take to address concerns that the interest group is to pass a new law, period, I would not earn the point because I haven't directly addressed the scenario yet. When I go ahead and say the rest of it, that gets rid of the restrictions the Johnson Amendment had placed in religious leaders, now I'm talking about the context of the scenario and I would earn that point. So again, make sure that you do that always on the concept application FRQ. All right. Um, now... What I want you to do is something different than we typically do, all right? I want you, within part A, to create a new paragraph, all right? We don't usually do that. Um, I want you to make your answers as easy for the AP reader to find as possible. And to me, as a reader, I love nothing more than to see a new paragraph for every single answer. I know exactly when they're answering the describe, then I know exactly when they're answering the explain. It makes my life super, super easy. And I encourage you to do that. Make the life of the reader easy. Um, readers will sometimes, when you see a response that's just written properly, you love it. And you might start to assume points are there that might not even be there. I'm just being real with you on that. So we're going to skip, um, we're going to put a space and go into our second paragraph. Now we're going to answer the and explain how partisan divisions could prevent this action. All right. So one of the key things to do is we have to define partisan divisions. All right, We have to show that we understand what partisan divisions are. Now, that doesn't mean we have to formally define it by saying partisan divisions is defined as blah, 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 although you can do that. That absolutely works. But you cannot just reuse that vocab word that was given to you. They need you to show that you understand that term. This is sometimes a frustrating thing for students and for readers because I hate not being able to give points to a good answer for some stupid technicality like that, but it happens. So don't let it happen to you, okay? So, um, again, I like to start by reusing the words in the prompt. Partisan divisions, I'm going to start by defining, all right? It refers to um, the growing ideological and political gaps, 
gap between the Democratic and Republican parties. All right. Again, you don't have to do it quite so formally. Um, I'm trying to leave no doubt. So this is one way to do it. Now the reader knows. I know what partisan divisions are. Um, these divisions could prevent the passage of legislation repealing the Johnson Amendment. So now, again, I have specifically addressed the scenario, right? Um, there is no um, debating that. I absolutely know what partisan divisions are, and I absolutely am in the scenario. So now I need to explain how exactly this could be. So I've restated the prompt. These divisions could prevent the passage of legislation repealing the Johnson Amendment, um, period. For example, right now, Democrats are the majority party in the House, and Republicans are the majority party in the Senate. Okay. Um, again, I haven't quite done enough yet. So I've given you this idea of divided government, right? I've shown you Democrats have one, Republicans have the other. I'm going to go the next level. I'm going to show you which party I think would support this bill and which one would oppose it. Um, while Republicans would likely laugh, support the repeal of the Johnson Amendment. Democrats typically favor a strong separation between church and state. and would likely oppose repealing, I'm gonna put the J for short this time. All right, um, therefore, while the bill may pass in the Senate, it is unlikely to pass in the House. All right, um, there you go. So I have explained, again, that's my explain was what, about three or four sentences, and that's how an explain should typically be, um, something like that. So um, hopefully that makes sense. This is part A. Um, I think because my formatting, it, I might not be able to do that here. Let's just see real quick. Um, boom, 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 nah, so let me not do that. Um, one thing you do wanna do is you wanna go ahead and label your answer as part A. If I try to label it, well, I can do that. It's just not formatted. So label your answers as part A, et cetera, and then your next one would be part B. All right, so hopefully that looks okay. Um, all right. Part B. Now, this is the one that's the most new. Well, actually, B and C are both pretty new. Um, it says explain how the restrictions imposed by the Johnson Amendment in this scenario differ from the Supreme Court's decision in Citizens United versus the FEC. All right, so... Um, we have a pretty big difference, right? The Johnson Amendment says it prohibits these religious leaders from contributing money to political campaigns or speaking out in favor or against candidates running for political office. Um, so who knows what Citizens United said? Um, give you guys a few seconds in the comments below. Um, what does Citizens United have to do with this? Does it have anything to do with this? Hope that it does. Um, Bump, bump, bump. Let's just take a glance over at that chat. Um, good, good, good. Hey, DJ, what's up, man? Hope you're doing well. All right, so Citizens United. This is a free speech case, right? And I see some of those coming through in the chat. Um, we we're talking about free speech. Uh, we're talking about the idea that spending money is a form of free speech and therefore um, corporations, labor unions, interest groups are allowed to spend an unlimited amount, right, when it comes to um, politics, making commercials, independent political speech. That seems very different than what the Johnson Amendment is saying, right? So 
um, we have explained how the restrictions imposed by the Johnson Amendment differ from the court's decision in Citizens United. So um, I'm going to say, just recap what it told us about the Johnson Amendment. Um, the Johnson Amendment restricts or prohibits religious leaders from engaging in political speech or campaign contributions, period. Um, this is very different from the court's ruling in Citizens United. Again, you don't need to say the whole thing. If you want to say versus FEC, you're definitely allowed to do that. This is very different than the court's ruling in Citizens United, comma, which stated that um, nonprofit, well, also and profit, obviously, had, or let's go with have, it's present tense, have free speech, and therefore are allowed to engage in unlimited, let's add the word independent, political expenditures. supporting or opposing candidates of their choice. All right, and that's it. Um, that is two sentences, and even my second sentence is probably a little bit longer than it really needs to be. Um, in fact, let me, let me just try to trim this down to bare necessities for you, because you are going to be pressed for time, um, which they did not profit to have free speech, therefore allowed you probably don't need this last part. Supporting, that's sort of implicit there. All right, so that would be your answer to B. Um, this one is very much like the old court comparison FRQ. Um, notice that they give you the required Supreme Court case, right? We have 15 required cases, and that's one of them. Citizens United is the only Supreme Court case that is unlikely to be on this year's AP exam. The reason for that is that it is a Unit 5 Supreme Court case. Um, all your other 14 cases, so 14 over 15, are all from units 1, 2, or 3. So the other 14 are all fair game. Citizens United will probably not be on this year's AP exam, um, but this was the example that College Board put out for us um, a few days ago. So they just gave it to us, and then they give us one that doesn't apply for this year. But that's okay. We are not going to stress about these things. It's fine. Don't worry. About, at least we know, right? Now, Part C, this one is a mashup of both the concept application, and the court comparison. It says, describe a liberty found in the Bill of Rights that the interest group referenced in this scenario feels is threatened. All right, so we'll make that part blue. We will bold our task verb. Then the second part, explain. We're going to go ahead and make this red, and we'll bold our task verb. It says, explain how this group might use the judicial branch to try and influence a change in this policy. Hey, by the way, I, I can't tell you for sure that there will be five task verbs on this concept application FRQ. College Board didn't say that. When they put this out, they're just like, here's a revised version to go with this year's exam. So maybe it's three, maybe it's four, maybe it's five, maybe it's six. I don't know. What you should do when you first read that prompt, though, is go through and count the task verbs. They will all be describe, explain. It actually should be just describe and explain. According to their website, it will only be describe and explain. You could see compare. I hope you don't because they didn't tell you to. They said describe and explain. You won't see identify on it this year because that's just too easy, I think. Um, so these are our two parts of part C. Real quick, I just want to go back so we can see how this is a mashup. So C says describe a liberty that the interest group feels is threatened. And the second part, explain how the group might use the judicial branch to try and influence a change of this policy. So if we do go back, notice part C. Explain why the Alliance Defending Freedom might argue that their constitutional rights are threatened by the Johnson Amendment. 
And then part C, explain how an interest group could use the decision in the court case to advance their agenda. So they just, they took those two uh, types of FRQs and they just put them together. That's what they did. I just wish we'd known about it a little bit earlier. But like I said, we're not going to worry about that. Um, the other thing, and so I don't know if some of you have already been saying this in the um, chat or not, interest groups, that's unit five. So interest groups are not going to be on this year's AP exam. So again, what I'm worried about here more than the content is the how do we write it? Because we're going to write the same regardless of if it's Congress or the president or an interest group. It doesn't matter. We're going to write it the same way. So part C, describe a liberty um, that is found in the Bill of Rights. And that the interest group reference, okay, feels threatened. This one I think is easy. Almost everybody got this point la last year on the AP um, exam. Like I said, I scored this one. What would, what would the interest group be upset about? What right do they think is being violated? Well, we kind of just said it in our answer for part B, didn't we? Um, they clearly would feel like their free speech rights are being violated. Um, so the interest group, so we could actually say the name of the group to show that we are using the um, prompt, the scenario. The Alliance, I forget what they're called, Defending Freedom, um, would most likely argue that their First Amendment free speech would be one answer. Freedom of religion would be the other answer. Spe free speech rights are being violated. And since this is a describe, I want us to go just a little bit beyond this because they are prevented from speaking out about politics. All right, you don't need to do anything more than that. I'm going to go ahead and change this color, make this blue. Actually, you know, let's just go back to black because um, now this is my answer. So that's the first part. Um, again, new paragraph for the second part, even though we're in part C. So you'd have this labeled as part C. So up here you'd have, boom, part C. And now we would go ahead and go to a new paragraph still in Part C. You don't need to label it Part C a second time. Explain how this group might use the judicial branch to try and influence a change in this policy. Like I said, this content not going to be at the AP exam this year, so I'm not hugely concerned about exactly what's going on here, um, even though it, it is a good FRQ prompt in normal times. So the ADF, I like acronyms for short, once I've used the Alliance for Fitting Freedom, use it as an acronym. You don't have much time. Um, thankfully, we're typing, so that should be a little bit faster. Um, bump, bump, bump. Would, let's say could, use the judicial branch. Again, I just like to resave my prompt to try and influence a change in policy by, so what could they do? Um, to me, there's basically two good answers to this. Um, and hopefully, again, in the chat, what can an interest group do to um, affect policy at the court level, at the judicial branch? They can file an amicus curiae brief, or they can file a lawsuit. So amicus curiae brief is a friend of the court brief, so somebody else brings the case, and then the interest group files a brief telling the court exactly why they feel the way that they do. On the other hand, they can just start the case themselves. So they can file a lawsuit. This is called using litigation, and now the court will hear the case and perhaps they can get that policy changed. So I'm going to describe litigation. Um, again, I'm not going to go over this so detailed because litigation could be on the AP exam, but the interest group's role in it, probably not. So um, by filing a lawsuit to, by filing a lawsuit, period. Um, by using this strategy of litigation, They can bring the issue to the courts. And now I'm going to go next level on their behinds and put something really good. Um, based on the precedent of Citizens United, the Supreme Court would likely rule that the Johnson Amendment is an unconstitutional violation of the religious leaders' 
First Amendment free speech rights. And I'm done. That's it. Um, I have explained, I have, I'm clearly talking about this scenario, right? Um, I've told them what litigation is and I've showed why it would be a successful thing. I have tied it to the uh, liberty that we just mentioned in our first part of the answer for part C. And yeah, that's it. Um, all right. So that would be how you answer this. Again, if we look, so I'm just going to kind of back up. This is my answer to part A. So we have, again, two paragraphs. The first one is one sentence. The second one is three to four sentences. That's the longest of my explains, right? Some explains can be done quicker than others. Part B was an explain that can be done pretty quickly. Again, I, I label it and say part B. I did that in two sentences, free speech. And then part C, again, two paragraphs. The first one's one sentence. Second one was two sentences. Um, so don't panic, all right? You guys got this. I know that 15 minutes seems crazy. You have 20 minutes. I don't know if you guys have done the um, preview thing yet where you can go online and you can do the demo test run of the AP exam and see exactly how it is. You'll have to sign in everything and then you'll start the exam and it puts you in a waiting room. Then it starts it. Then what will happen... When you start the concept application FRQ, you'll have 20 minutes on the clock. When it gets to five minutes, that timer is going to turn red, and it's telling you you need to submit that. Now, how you submit will either be by copy pasting because you'll be working on your own Word doc or Google doc or somewhere else, and then you either copy paste it into like a text box that they provide you, or you uh, give it an attachment, right? So you would save it and then upload that attachment. Um, you can do either one. That shouldn't take five minutes. So in my opinion, you have a little bit more than 15 minutes. I also would not recommend that you wait until you have exactly one minute left because what if something goes wrong? What if your internet gets a little bit slow? What if it's a little bit glitchy? Don't run that risk, right? So give yourself a couple minutes. Realistically, you probably have more like 17 or 18 minutes though to write this, all right? So again, part A, one, two, three, four. This was five sentences so far, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sentences. You guys can do that, all right? Ten sentences for this thing. Um, again, hopefully um, this is helping you guys out. I'm just glancing over at the chat right now, and I happen to see a question that says, what do I recommend um, typing or writing? That obviously is going to depend on each individual person, I think. Um, for me personally, I'm typing 100%. I can type much faster than I can uh, write. I would not be typing on this stupid laptop um, where I don't like the keyboard, but I would be typing. You can definitely type faster. You can change what you want to say faster. Make sure that you guys proofread because it is easy to make typos. Um, obviously, if you've been watching some of my other videos, I've had ones where people can give me sample thesis statements. And sometimes people are missing a word and it looks to me clearly like it's just a typo. The reader can't assume, oh, they meant to say does not, but they just said does, even though it totally doesn't make sense. You can't assume anything. All you can score is what is written down, or in this case, typed out on the screen. Um, so I would strongly encourage you to uh, proofread, definitely. So use that 15 minutes, use a minute or two to go back, proofread, make sure everything looks good, feels good, um, and then go ahead and submit. Um, a couple other little things that you could do. Um, because you're typing is, and I tested this on College Board's website, you can use bold and underline. Um, so, for instance, going back to part A, I might bold and underline this. One action Congress to take to address the concerns of the interest group is to pass a new law. That makes it so easy for the reader to see what your answer is. And then I go ahead and now I show the context of the scenario, right? Um, so there are little things. Don't overuse that. For instance, if you look at, so on this one, I'm going to do it wrong. So that's a good way to do it. Let's say for this one, oops, I, why is the control, the control and footnote key on this stupid keyboard are backwards. That is weird. But I go ahead and I bold and underline everything. Is that going to help the reader? No. In fact, that might make it worse for the reader um, because now it's like you're yelling at me almost, everything's underlined, nothing stands out. So if you're going to use bold and underline and italics, don't overuse it. Um, I don't know if color works, so I would stick to black, and then I would just bold and underline. All right. Um, Devin, yeah, we can definitely do a coot again. Not on this one. We're going to be finishing this up in just a minute or two. Um, oh, yeah, you can't see my screen. Sorry, I took that off. 
Ha! I'm just kidding. Um, so, you're right. It's easy to forget what's happening here. Um, so what I did was part A, I showed you a good example of how to use bold and underline. Um, so by just showing a couple of the words, passing new law, the key thing in your answer. The second part of part A, this is a bad example of how to use bold and underline because I bolded and I underlined everything. Um, yeah, no comic sans um, on the AP exam. Let's stick to some normal people font, please and thank you. I think that would be for the best. Um, so yeah, don't worry about your font. As long as you don't do some you know, goofy font or weird font, I think you'll be good there. Um, all right, so that's pretty much what I wanted to go over this morning or this afternoon, depending on where and when you are. Um, I hope that everybody is doing well. Um, to all my students, like I said, I miss you guys. Um, I wish that we could be in the classroom together. Um, but what are you going to do? I'm sure I'll get to see you guys at some point, I hope, in the next few weeks. Um, all right, so I'm just going to check out the chat just for a moment or two, but i um, pretty much going to start winding this down. Um, so Devin had asked about a Kahoot. I'll do a Kahoot. Um, I'll set that up with longer um, time frames, and I'll advertise that it's a Kahoot live stream. So if that's something that you don't want to do, then obviously you don't have to do it, but you're more than welcome to. Um, I do have, and I mention this at the end of my video sometimes, and the links are usually in my description, or you can click on my channel and you'll see a link to it. I have something called the Ultimate Review Packet. It has some really good study guides um, for the documents, the cases, for the content, for those units that you need to do. Um, it has a lot of practice. Practice is mostly multiple choice, to be honest with you. There's a ton of multiple choice. It's good review for the content. Um, there's not a lot of good FRQ practice on there, just being honest. Um, but if you want to check that out, you know, by all means, you're welcome to. Um, can't hurt. Unit one is up there for free, so um, you can definitely check that out. Um, so I'll let you know. Um, we'll do. I'll probably do a couple of these a day. It seems like this has been a success so far. Um, so I'll probably do a couple. I'll make a video specifically about this new FRQ probably and post that tomorrow. I would guess um, just to you know give you guys a more organized way to do it, where everything is kind of edited down and concise. Because I don't think people would really want to look back at this live stream. It's not going to be the most efficient thing. If I were looking at this live stream later, I'd probably check out after the Kahoot debacle, but that's just me. Um, yeah, K AP Classroom, they have practice FRQs up. Unfortunately, most of them aren't even to the redesign, and they're not to the specifics of this um, 2020 COVID-19 version, so that kind of sucks, um, but it can't hurt to work on those. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot that are really you know made for this. What's up, Matthew? I see you out here. Um, just seeing if I recognize anybody. There's my boy Brandon again. Um, a junior in elementary school. I don't know about that, but okay. Um, four live streams a day. You know I gotta have time to watch Lost, or actually really to play Final Fantasy VII. I'm not finished yet. I'm only on chapter 15. I've only gotten to play like an hour in the last week, uh, but that's because I'm here serving you the people. So anyway, um, I think this has gone on long enough. I don't want to drag this out any longer. I hope that this helped. Um, I hope that you guys are feeling confident um, as you get ready for this AP exam. And I'm sure that you will feel more and more confident as we get closer. Um, anything I can do to help you guys out, let me know. Uh, let me know in the chat if there's anything you wanted me to do specifically. Um, but I will probably do a couple live streams every day between now and Monday. I'll probably even do some on Monday. The exam is until 4 p.m. Um, try to help you guys out the best that I can. All right. So, um, yo, somebody noticed my West Wing back there? Awesome. Um, nobody, I don't think anybody's ever commented on that in the videos before. Um, anyway, I hope that this helped. You guys have a good day. Um, and yeah, check out some more live streams. I'll be doing them for you for sure. All right, see you guys. Be good.